Hey, I've already started. You know, I, I try to avoid... I try to avoid doing too many very political diatribes on my on my channel here, which... But I, I think about it, what do I... You know, the reason I avoid these purely political things is because they're so temporal in a way. And, you know, you because of your position and, and you know, the the direction that you're coming from, you're often wrong a lot about these issues, you know, and political. But nevertheless, here I am, I'm going to spout out, do a little, a little rant on, on it, because who cares? I, I'm nobody in particular as far as, I'm just some guy that has like a small following, if anything. So I'm going to let you know what I really think about some political thing that's going on today, which is the, the impeachment of Donald Trump, the President of the United States. And my, my position and what I've come to this conclusion over forever, you know, which tells you that I made up my mind long before, is that I, Donald Trump is a lot worse than what you really think he is. That's the thing that bothers me. I, I I didn't like Donald Trump in the 1980s. I thought he was a jerk back then. But there were people who admired him because he was such a go-getter and he was rich and he, he, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, personally, I think he's a thug. Underlying all everything else, he's a New York thug. And I, I don't want to go into all the things that are wrong with Donald Trump. And I, I even have some things I agree with Donald Trump on. But I'm, I'm going to tell you that I think he's a lot worse than what people think he is with regard to how he's running the country. And then let me start out with, a, with this. They're impeaching him over something that occurred in the Ukraine where he was. This is there's so much hypocrisy in this, but. They voted a over three hundred million dollars in military assistance to the Ukraine, and it was voted in by the House and the Senate and signed by the president. And um, then he did not. That it was supposed to go through in June or July, June, and he did not give them the aid because he wanted them to do an investigation or announce an investigation into the Bidens and their Burisma um, a gas company where Joe Biden's son was involved with the ownership of, and the running of that. And he was so certain, or he faked like he was certain, that there was something crooked going on with Joe Biden's son. And, you know, there's a good chance that there was something like like um, nepotism involved in that. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't doubt that. But... That's not necessarily against the law. If we had to get out all the people for nepotism in the world, then half the rich people in the world would be in jail. You know, I mean, that's how the rich people operate. They're all nepotism. They don't let any new people in. They just, like, help their relatives. And that's the way it is. And in politics as well. And if you doubt that, uh, you know, look at the uh, people that are, you know, the daughter and the son-in-law of Donald Trump. What? What does Donald Trump's son-in-law have any authority and understanding of the things that he's in charge of just because he's a Donald Trump's son-in-law? You know what I mean? But l let's look at it this way. When I listen to the Republicans in Congress, you know, I listen to them and they say things like, uh, well, you know, during the Obama administration, all they gave the Ukraine for me military assistance was teddy bears and pillows and, and food. But during the Trump administration, they're helping them with, with missiles and stuff. Well, yeah, that's very true if you count it just by the Trump administration. But most of those bills are started in the House of Representatives. I mean, if you read the, the, the Constitution, all those spending bills started in the, in the House of Representatives. The House of Representatives, during the Trump administration, at least after the first year are Democrats. So who were the ones who voted in all the teddy bears? It was the Republicans. They're the ones who didn't help the Ukraine. And then when Donald Trump got that money and he was going to, and his job is to execute the law, which means just do the actual distribution of the money, he withheld it 
waiting for the the pre, the new president of the Ukraine, Zelensky, I guess his name is. They're waiting for him to do an investigation on the Bidens. And until he announced an investigation on the Bidens, he wasn't going to release that money. And then he got caught, and they said, well, look, he released it. You know, yeah, after you got caught, you released it. In other words, so there, look at all the hypocrisy here. The Republicans are the ones who didn't help the Ukraine. It was the Democrats who did help the Ukrainians, which, you know, but let's let's look at even a more sinister side of what's really going on here. What Donald Trump was elected largely because Vladimir Putin and the Russians helped to influence the election and advertising and so forth on various websites and so forth. So Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump are like this, thick as thieves together. Why would Donald Trump favor Vladimir Putin over other people in other countries? Well, one thing is that Vladimir Putin's the guy who got him elected in the first place. Let's, now, let's look at other evidence here. Ever since Donald Trump's been involved with NATO, he's been trying to bust it up. He's trying to say, oh, well, you're not giving enough money, they say. Well, that might be true, but but the people in NATO, the other nations in NATO right now, are saying that NATO is falling apart. Who, who benefits the most from NATO falling apart? Ask yourself that question. And that's exactly what Donald Trump is I implementing, is a, the destruction of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. That's what he's implementing. He doesn't. He's making enemies out of France and Germany and England and all that and starting to cozy up with Russia. Russia, who attacked the Ukraine, the southern part of the Ukraine, and, you know, Vladivostok or whatever, the, the ocean, the, um, the seaport there. And, and Vladimir Putin and the Russians have militarily, uh, that's what Russians are, aggressively military, into the Ukraine. And Ukraine's not part of NATO, but the United States uh, Congress decided to help the Ukraine fight the Russians because the Russians are being aggressive. The Russians are aggressive in Syria. They're aggressive in the Ukraine. And they will be aggressive in Poland as well if Donald Trump succeeds in destroying NATO, which he's doing every effort to do. So you've got to ask yourself, now, this is how bad Donald Trump really is. He... Got a help, got elected by Vladimir Putin and the Russians, and he's done nothing but help Vladimir Putin and the Russians to gain more military advantage over that part of the world. And in the meantime, the United States is not as powerful. And and why is this even a problem? I, I'm anti-war to a large degree. I am anti-war. I don't want to fight the Russians. I don't want to fight as much as I you know avoid going to war as much as possible. But the Russians aren't avoiding, and Donald Trump is helping the Russians in going to war. And if he withdraws, if, if NATO falls apart, then Latvia and Poland are next on Russia's list of potential invasions. You know, Poland, I'm sure, does not want Russia to be able to invade them. Poland wants to be in NATO because they're afraid of Russia. They, Russia has invaded them several times throughout history and taken them over several times throughout history. So, yeah, and that's what Donald Trump's doing. He, why would, the, the part I'm baffled by also in this, why does Donald Trump love Russia so much? Why does he love Vladimir Putin so much? Well, aside from the fact that Vladimir Putin got him elected president, aside from that, it's because he favors oligarchies and he hates democracy. That's what Donald Trump is about. He likes wealthy oligarchs to be the head of the world, and he considers himself and his family in that category. That's where he's coming from. You know, Donald Trump is a lot worse than what anybody thinks. And, and you know, the part that really, that really baffles me the most is why did so many people who make like $25,000, $35,000 a year, 10 $15,000, $18,000 a year. Why did they vote for this billionaire? I don't even know if he is was a billionaire. He, might, he probably is now. But why did they vote for Donald Trump? He cut taxes on corporations. He cut taxes on billionaires. And 
you know, I, they're trying to tell you the economy is so great. Not around here, it's not. You know, not around my in my neck of the woods over here, it's not. Um, our jobs have dried up a lot. You know, and, and not only that, but the the average income has been dropping in relationship to inflation over the last 20 years, ever since 1980. You know, I don't want to get into That's politics again. But why do people who aren't going to get a tax cut and aren't going to get helped one bit, now they're talking about cutting back on food stamps for, you know, well, why are these people voting, for, you know, they're voting to take money, money out of their own pockets. They're voting to take food out of their own children's mouths. I, I don't understand it. I, 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 I think it's just because they're stupid. That's my honest opinion.